This is the first section in chapter one of the Pure Year Two book, and this is proof by contradiction. There are lots of different ways of proving things in maths and or disproving things in maths, and proof by contradiction is one of them. There is uh, you can prove or disprove things by using a counter example um, or by exhaustion where you just try um, a finite set of values um, to prove that something is true or false and proof by contradiction is just another way of doing proof and a way that it works is that we try and prove um, uh, a statement which we know is false by actually disproving the opposite to that statement so let's say for example um, that I wanted to prove by counterexample or oh, sorry sorry prove by contradiction uh, that uh, Brussels sprouts taste taste nasty okay so what I would do, I would actually start by tr trying to prove that Brussels sprouts taste amazing. And I would eat some Brussels sprouts, then come to the conclusion that they do taste nasty or come to some sort of contradiction to my original statement. So you can see how it works. You prove, try and prove the opposite statement until you end up with some sort of contradiction or something that doesn't make sense. So a few things that will be useful uh, in this uh, section is we're going to often be referring to integers and uh, prime numbers and things like that and we want to sort of make sure that we're using the right type of notation so when we're talking about an integer we'd probably want to be using n um, if we're looking at um, odd numbers we may want to describe them as 2n plus 1 for odd or 2n um, or 2n plus 2 for even and we can use n or k for this um, also um, fractions we want to it's useful to def describe fractions as something over something a over b and prime numbers we'll refer to them as p1 P2, prime number one, prime number two, prime number three, and so on, yeah, up to prime number n, yeah, so this is going to be useful, n for integer, want to be able to describe odd and even numbers using n or k, uh, fractions as a over b, and primes as prime number one, prime number two, and so on, okay, so let's have a look at this question here. So here I want to prove by contradiction that there is no greatest odd number. Now whenever you have a question like this, we must always write, start by writing down our assumption. And our assumption is going to be the opposite to the statement we've been given. Okay, so prove by contradiction that there, there is no greatest odd number. So my assumption is that there is a greatest odd number. Let's write that word out properly. So assumption, there is a greatest odd number, yeah? That's my assumption, that there is a greatest odd number, okay? And we might want to call that odd number n, or we might want to call that um, greatest odd number 2k plus 1 for example okay so I'm going to say let the greatest odd number be 2k plus 1 um, for some value of k yeah, so I've got this greatest odd number. Well, I know that I can, but I know I can take that greatest odd number and I can add another two to it and also get 
found out that a number which is greater than it. So I've come to a, a contradiction that whatever number I pick as the greatest odd number, and if I add two to it, I get a, another uh, odd number because I know that even, or oh, sorry, odd plus even is odd. So that I will have another greatest, uh, another odd number. So we can write down that actually there is no greatest odd number. Yeah, there is no greatest odd number. So that's our proof by con contradiction. We start with the assumption and we like pr try and prove the opposite statement until we come up with some sort of contradiction. Here's another one. Prove by contradiction that if n squared is even, then n must be even. So our assumption is going to be the opposite statement. So we'll just write down this assumption here, just like we did on the last one. And this assumption is going to be that um, if n squared is odd, or n squared is even, then n must be odd, okay? So if n squared is even, then n must be, um, uh, must be odd. So we're trying to prove the opposite statement. Okay, so we start by saying, okay, um, if n is odd, and we can describe odd numbers as 2k plus 1, so for um, all values of k, or for any value of k, that's going to be an odd number. So let's see what happens when we do that odd number squared. Do we end up with um, an even number. Is that possible? We're trying to prove the opposite. Now we know um, in real life, we, 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 you know, that's just something we know, but in maths we need to prove it. So let's take our odd number, 2k plus 1, and let's square it and see what happens. Okay, so that's going to be 2k plus 1, times by 2k plus 1 and we end up with 4k squared plus 4k plus 1. Okay, now that can be factorised out. So I could put 4 or 2, so I've got 2 times something plus 1. Okay. Now, if you've got two times something plus one, it's odd, isn't it? Yeah, two lots of something. And the something that we have is this bit here. Two times something plus one is odd. Okay, so what do we end up with? That if n is odd, n squared is odd. So we've started with n being odd. And we found out that n squared is also odd. And we've proved that algebraically. Okay, which means that if n is even, then n squared must be even. Because what we've proved is if you start with an odd number, you're going to end with an odd square. So if you start with an even number, well, the only other lem numbers are left are going to be even squares. So we've proved our case. And we can then, our final statement is, is basically going to be the statement we're trying to prove. prove so therefore we can write down, uh, therefore, if n squared is even, then n must be even. So you'll notice a pattern here that we write down an assumption, we do some working, and then the last statement at the end, 
is pretty much what is written in the very first statement there. Okay. Next example, and this is a, um, a proof that you can memorize. This sort of uh, comes up a lot when you're trying to prove that um, a third is irrational. And the proof by contradiction that square root of two is uh, irrational. So our assumption is the opposite statement. So our assumption is um, assumption the square root of two is rational. Now, if something is rational, it means it can be written as a fraction like that. You can write it as a over b. So if the square root of two was rational, we should be able to write it as a over b. So we'll say, OK, let's see if we can write the square root of two as something divided by something for some sort of value for um, a and b. OK, so the first thing that we need to do is really this we need to we're assuming that um, a and b um, this fraction here has been simplified as much as it can be. Which means if you've got a simplified fraction, it means that these two numbers don't have a common factor. So simplified implies no common factors. If they did have a common factor, then you'd be able to simplify a bit further. Right, so the first thing we need to do is going to square both sides to end up with 2 equals a squared over b squared. Then we can uh, times both sides by b squared and we'll get 2b squared equals a squared. Now, because we've got two times something over here, that tells us that a squared is even, because if you do two times something, you're going to get um, an even number. Which also means, if you think about our last example, our proof, it means that a must be even. Yeah. Now, carrying on from that, if a is even, a is even, it means it can be written as 2 times something. So let's say a is 2 times some number n for some value of n. Yeah, because we've said that a must be even. So now let's go back to the, the statement we had before, and uh, which was this. Let's write it the other way around. a squared equals 2b squared. And let's replace a squared with 2n, or replace a with 2n. So 2 times something, because a is even, squared. OK, and that equals 2b squared. So from there, we'll multiply the brackets. We'll end up with 4n squared equals 2b squared. So this is just um, algebra. Um, I can divide both sides by 2. Uh, and that will give me 2n squared equals b squared. Now you might be thinking, well, well, what does this mean? Well, actually what this means, because we have the 2 here, this means that b squared must be even. Yeah, because you've got 2 times something to give you uh, b squared. So if b squared is even, that means that b is even. Now, let's have a look. I've got up here that a is even, and I've got down here that b is even. Let's think about it. If a is even, I've got some sort of even number, because the original statement was the square root of 2 is a over b. I've got an even number over even number. Oh, right. Well, we have a contradiction, because if I have an even number over an e even number, that means this fraction can be simplified because two even numbers will have a common factor of two. So we sort of need to finish this off. 
um, and say something like um, uh, since A and B are both even and have a common I'm going to run out of space here common factor of 2 we have our contradiction um, I'll just write down a contradiction here because I've run out of space space um, so if we have a contradiction then the square root of 2 is irrational and it's worth memorizing um, this uh, proof because it's pretty much the same for um, any type of uh, third uh, like for example proving that the square root of 3 is irrational or the square root of 5 is irrational or the square root of 7 is irrational it's the same type of process okay our last example here example number four prove by con contradiction that there are infinitely many prime numbers okay and this is a nice little proof and it's actually linked to prime factors you know when you did factor trees and you worked out the prime factors it's it's uh, linked to that okay so like the f previous ones let's start with our assumption and our assumption is that they're, they're not infinitely my, uh, infinitely many prime numbers but there there are a finite number of prime numbers so that's the statement we're trying to prove and hopefully we'll we'll come up with um, some sort of contradiction so let's say um, if I were to list all the prime numbers and there was a finite number of them I would have prime number one, prime number two, prime number three. Okay, I'd have a list of up to n prime numbers and we'll finish at n because we've said there's a finite number of them. Yeah. So where n is some sort of finite number of prime, prime number. 722 or prime number 1 million and 50 yeah if there were a prime number n would be some sort of number where we'd get to the end of the list and that would be it okay now this is linked to prime factors in that we're going to take a number let's call this number n and let's say that this prime number is the product of all of this this list of primes yeah so we've got a number where we're listing we're multiplying basically all of the prime numbers up to prime number n so imagine there's a finite list of prime numbers you multiply them all together and you get this number n so basically you'd have a big factor tree and you'd have um, in the factory tree you'd have all of these prime numbers so the assumption is there's this number n which is m made up of the product of all of these this infinite number of primes but we're going to throw a spanner in the works let's say right let's add one to this list all oh, right okay it's going to be a problem if i now try so if i try and divide n by any of the primes of the primes I'm always going to get a remainder of one so if I try and divide n by any of the primes I will get a remainder of one because of this one at the end you could try it yourself with a number you know multiply some prime numbers together add one if you divide it by any of those prime numbers you'll end up with a uh, remainder of one okay so if i end up with a remainder of one that means that actually none of these primes here is a factor of n okay 
so uh, none of the primes and that's the primes p1 p2 p3 up to our pn is a factor of n we've got this number that we've tried to divide it by all of our prime numbers and it doesn't work now this relies on the fact actually that every single number can be written as a product of prime so this goes back to stuff from GCSE every single number can be written as a product of primes including prime numbers but the product is just the number itself so we found a number here that we've tried to write as the product of primes and it doesn't work none of those primes will are factors of n so what does that mean that must mean there's either um, another prime number that's a factor of n that i haven't listed or n is prime itself okay so either um, n is prime in which case none of these would be factors of it anyway or um, there is another prime that is a factor of n so what does that mean well that actually means we've come up with a contradiction so that must mean that there is an an infinite number of prime numbers yeah so we have a contradiction therefore there is an infinite number of primes this proof is worth sort of reading for a couple of times until it really sort of sinks in uh, what's really going on and as I said just try it with some numbers pick a number uh, I don't know um, uh, 10 um, and say right okay that's all or that's five times two so there's my primes product primes let's add one to that all right in which case now let's write this down so yeah um, let's say I had 10 is like my number n and that's five times two so there's my primes but then let's say I added one to it okay so that means five is no longer a factor not a factor anymore because now we've got the number 11 and uh, that's not a factor of it anymore so what does that mean either um, the number which we've created which is now 11 is either a prime number itself which it is or there's different prime factors which I haven't thought about and then tr try it you'll always find the same case that when you write a product of any primes and add one to it the number that you now get is either a prime number itself or there are other prime factors of that number now the one I picked for example by adding one to the prime factors I ended up with a prime number if I picked a, a different number that may not happen so for example if I uh, let's pick the number 8 which is 2 times 2 times 2 so that's the number 8 um, if I add 1 to those prime factors I get 9 so it either means that 9 is a prime number or there are other prime factors and there are other prime factors the other prime factors are three or three times three yeah so that will always work as I said try it with a few numbers get your head around it and then it will really uh, make uh, much more sense so you should now be in a position to do exercise 1a on pages 4 and 5 of the textbook